Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to Arch with Imran. I'm Imran and I hope you guys have an amazing day. In today's video, we're going to do a basic tutorial on SketchUp 3D Warehouse. Now, as you can probably tell by the title, this video is a collaboration with PASS. Now, PASS is University of Portsmouth Architecture Society, and this video will be posted on both channels. So, so if you're watching this video on the PASS YouTube, come check out my channel, links in the description. We do a load of great content and software tutorials aimed at early years architecture students. And for you guys on my channel, please go check them out. They have loads of amazing guest lecturers and they record all of the lectures and put them on there. Some really great content and I attend a number of them myself. So let's get into it. Okay guys, so here we are in SketchUp. Now, for reference, I'm using SketchUp Mate 2017 and this is a free version and I'll try leave the download link in the description. You always start with a person for reference of scale, so I'm just going to delete him. Now, as I've said, this video is on SketchUp's 3D Warehouse. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into Window and we're going to hit 3D Warehouse. Now, this is SketchUp's built-in 3D Warehouse, and as you can see, it's already on the last thing I, want, I looked at. So if you click the 3D Warehouse, you'll be taken to the homepage. And here you have a number of SketchUp's own created collections, as well as user submitted works. There's also a number of companies that have done that have done SketchUp models for professional equipment. So for example, if a company specializes in kitchen appliance, they may have their own collection on here of their own equipment that's the right size. So what we're going to first look at is one, individual elements, and then we're going to look at whole structures. As I've said, we're going to look at both, but first we're going to look at individual components. Now, the benefit of um, SketchUp 3D Warehouse is say you've done a model and you're trying to populate it with furniture, it's a really great place to get high detail models that are trusted and that, that work well. Although I recommend looking at SketchUp's own, as always, I recommend you just go through and experiment and explore. It's the best way to learn. But I'm going to actually look at this featured community model. This divan bed here, I really like the look of it, so I want to put this in my model. So what we're going to do is we're just going to open it, it's got all of the information, and we're just going to hit download. Now, you're given the option to automatically load it into your SketchUp model, you can hit yes and it will put it straight into your document, or you can hit no and it will go to your downloads folder and you can just drag it into another document at a different time. So I'm going to hit yes. And as you can see, it's giving me the option to place it. So I'm just going to use this point as the start. Now, it's really important to keep in mind that sometimes not all of the models are to the correct size. So you can see here we have some measurements. So I'm just going to get my pencil tool and I'm going to draw from one point to the other just to check the size. Now, as you guys can see in the bottom right corner, we are in inches and I want millimeters. So I'm also going to show you guys how to change the units. So I'm just going to hit escape to stop this. And what we're going to do is we're going to go into to window and we're going to hit model info. Now, here you can see the length is units, but if you're on another selection, just click units on this left bar. Now, it's default format to architectural. Now, this is because SketchUp is an American program, so it defaults to inches. So what we're going to do is instead of choosing architectural, we're going to choose decimal and we can now choose millimeters in this drop down here. You can also choose your precision. So this is how many points after the decimal point you'll register. Now, if you're working on a really small scale, you want to have a high precision. And if you're working on a really large scale, you don't necessarily need too high precision. I recommend at least two after the decimal point. Now, the other, the other options, we're going to leave the same and I'm just going to hit close. Now, if you see, if we go back and draw again, then we are now in millimeters. Now, as you'll notice, as you draw lines, they will snap to green, blue, and red. Now these are because they'll snap in the X, Y, and Z axes, and it's a really good way to tell if your line is straight. So I've done a line across here, and it says 1,677 millimeters. Now on the floor, it says 1,600, so this is close enough. It's most likely correct. Now this directly links into another benefit of using SketchUp's own models. They are always going to be the correct size when you place them but they don't have the same variety that the community made models do. Now, secondly, I'm going to show you guys how you can take these apart. So as you'll see, when you place them, they're most likely made into a group. So what we're going to do is we're going to go right click and we're going to hit explode. This will explode into individual elements, as you can see. So now we can just move this single bed. Now, if we go on the move tool, we can choose a corner and we can use this to move around. You can also rotate it by also choosing a corner and rotating along the axes. 
Okay, so now what do we do if the model is not the right size? So I've got this chair from this um, 3D warehouse and what we're gonna do is we're gonna check the width of it. I'm gonna just draw a pen tool from there here to here. Now it says it's 289 millimeters. Say for example, we want this to be 350. Now, what we can do is here with this box with a line, you have a resize tool. Now you can resize uniformly or non-uniformly, but say this isn't precise enough, you want a specific length. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna select the whole model again and we're gonna use the tape measure tool. Now you can also hit T. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on the bottom left to the bottom right. Now, this already says 289 millimeters as you can see at the bottom. We want it 350, so what we're just gonna do is we're gonna type 350 and hit enter. And then we'll be given this option to resize the model. If we hit yes, it will resize the entire model uniformly to that size. And now just to double check, if we get our pencil, here to here is now 350. Okay, so at the start of the video, I spoke about downloading individual components or whole structures. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back onto the 3D warehouse and I'm gonna search something, for example, condo. Now I've just searched condo and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into models. Now, as you can see, there's a few examples and you have to go through here and look out ones you want. But here we have a really nice condo. Now I'm gonna load this directly into my model. Now, really quickly, you might ask, why would I want this in SketchUp? So I personally think it makes a really nice background so that you populate your, your render. Keep in mind, it's really important that if you do use other people's models in your work, it's very important to clearly reference that it's not yours. Now, the other benefit to using these are for practice. So I personally love to download other people's buildings and practice rendering with them, adding stylizing, just to get a feel for it and it saves you wasting time building an entire building if you want to experiment with different structures. Now guys, unfortunately that is all we have time for in this video. Hopefully you found it helpful. If you guys want more sketch videos, please leave them in the comments. I'll see what I can do. And if you're on the past channel, come check out mine. And for you guys here, please go check out that video and I'll catch you guys in another one. Take it easy.